Welcome back everyone. Uh, we're here in the, the next part of our uh, YouTube fix and now we're going to talk about the copyright problems. Um, it's going to get a little bit technical so we hope that you will be able to, to follow along with us and bear with us as we work through this. So Carl, the copyright issue on YouTube. Yeah, yes. We will. The time what has come. The yeah, time the, has the, come. the time has come. So, you know, my perspective, currently there's a big problem not only with YouTube, but just copyright in general. Oh yeah, uh, no, yeah, yeah, true. As I see it, on the one hand, you have the copyright holders who have worked hard, and let's give it to them, they've work, work, worked hard, they've put a lot of money into, for example, musicians creating music. Yeah, it's okay, their stuff, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's stuff. And, um, but on the other hand, you also have uh, very talented um, content creators on YouTube who want to create original content and maybe want to use a mu some music in the background. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a complicated issue of, of, of sampling. Yes. Using bits and pieces of other people's um, work, yes. right, of copyrighted work, but then making your own out of it. Yes. But then the the problem comes in where exactly is the law? Where's the border of that? How much? When can you say no? Yes, you're not allowed to use it, or you're allowed to use it. So then you get into the technicalities of the law because regarding to as, as far as the law is concerned if you have the copyright holder you have a giant big red button that you can just push and say stop yes. at any time doesn't matter regarding details uh, of how you used it when you used it how much you changed it you know you have the you know you have that authority because it's been abused in the past yes that's so that right. so that makes sense i mean it, it understands but it's there's an impasse it's under it's it's a very non-flexible law and I think it's one of those other issues that that uh, was just accelerated by technology because technology allows you to so easily take samples from wherever you want, mm. you know, and take here and take a bit there, mm. and then you know sort of change it and warp it a little bit, but then it's still stolen content. Yeah. So the law just doesn't have anything regarding any details. It's not flexible yeah. at all. And it, it it almost seems as if there's this um, impasse that happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Between uh, also, you know, honest and hardworking content creators on YouTube who, who maybe, you know, they want to review an album of their favorite artist, for but example, they're not allowed to example, use yeah, yeah. the music. Or um, at all, yeah. if a if if a mu a guy wants to re review a movie, he's not really able to do that because he's technically he's not allowed to use screenshots yeah, yeah, of yeah, the you're, movie. Yeah, you're not allowed to. So you know, there's this. It's almost like this this constricting of freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it it uh, stunts creativity. Is exactly, that stunts creativity. It stands so creativity. you have a table, and the resources on your table are limited. Yeah, very. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I mean, that's not just a problem with YouTube. I think yeah, it's, yeah. it's a problem that's in our world today mm. uh, because information is so readily yeah, yeah, yeah. readily available. But we're looking specifically at YouTube. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we, are, we're we, we have this impasse now. You know, you have yeah, the, yeah. the content creators on the one side, and you have the <coughs> copyright holders. The copyright holders on the other side. So, how do we fix that problem? Okay, so my suggestion would be to come up with a list system. Uh, so everybody would work according to these lists, right? The the three lists would be the A, the blacklist. Okay. Um, that we uh, that would mean that any so the other lists work that they would contain a database of uh, audio or audio information or clips or, or audio information, audio tracks, and then video clips as well, like clips of videos. And then you would either, those, those, those two categories will either land in the blacklist, which means no one is allowed to touch your content, no matter how much of it is used or under any it's off limits, basically. It's off limits, absolutely off limits. Off limits. Then there's the gray, the gray list. Okay. The gray list means that you want to be compensated. As okay. long as you're compensated, then it's your your um, your your um, you let your assets be used freely. Yes. As long as whoever's making money off of you, you're making money as well. Oh, uh, I see. So I it's see. a compensation business. I see. And if there's one more, which is the white list. This is just if you're feeling, you know, honestly, it's not something that you put a lot of effort into. Like a musician, for example, there's tracks that you feel like ah, there wasn't a lot of production value. You made it in a day, for example, it's promotional content. It's just free to use. Or maybe, uh, maybe in the whitelist, you're saying now, if I understand correctly, that the whitelist would be content that the, the copyright holder feels uh, 
is happy to give away for free on the yes, YouTube, on platform. YouTube platform. Yes. But it's only on the YouTube pla yes, platform. Yes, yes, the yes, copyright yes. will obviously still be in effect on other platforms. Yeah, as far as the law is concerned, it yes. doesn't. Yeah, it's yes. still but what I see is also an advantage of having that whitelist is that you might have a small band that released their first studio album, and the, the content is obviously it's copyrighted by the record producing company, but they might decide to make that album freely available on YouTube so that content creators can use it for advertising purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's another advantage yeah, yeah, of the whitelist. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so it could be content of your own that you make available to content creators mm. in order to advertise your own work as well. Yes, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So for, whatever, for whatever reason you choose, there's the three categories. The black list is don't touch it at okay. all. Gray list is if you make money, I want to make money, right? That's the copyright holder. And then the white list is listen, free, use it as, as you want. Okay. Use it as you wish. So, and, uh, so then, um, uh, as I understand it, um, the, uh, I guess the mechanics of how these lists would work is um, that YouTube would run bots or algorithms that would go yeah. and create a database of, yes, 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 of yeah. the different contents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that content would originally first be loaded onto the blacklist to protect yes, yeah. the, the yeah the initially yes, yes because that is as the law is yes is you have the cop so yes. so don't and touch it the, 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 yeah. yes and then the copyright holders will then have the opportunity to shift go it. in to go shift it yeah, over yeah, yeah, yeah. if it's not shifted you can't use it yeah yeah at, and yeah, that's yeah. then to protect the copyright yeah, holders, yeah, yeah correct that, yeah absolutely okay. yeah, that's that's correct yeah and uh then maybe if we uh, move on a bit let's chat about how uh, these lists would be implemented onto the three categories of YouTube videos. All right. Okay. So how it works is like uh, like we mentioned, it's according to a database. You have your audio and your audio files and your video files loaded, and then they would be compared to the to to whatever video you're creating as a content creator, and then it would be very specifically according to a formula, uh, calculate a percentage. So to to eventually let you know, okay, of this video, the percentage, like it's, let's say it's one percent, one percent of your, one percent of the whole video revenue will go to your, um, will go to the, the copyright holder. But this, um, this this formula, it's um, it's according to, you know, it's 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 calculated according to the um, exactly how much is used. So it's not it's not like if you don't use a whole song. You won't get credit for a whole song. If you just use a little bit of a song, it would be a little bit of a song for a movie, and the the movie and the audio will be separate. And the, in the de in the, the the in the description will be the detailed formula how it works. Yeah. So exactly. so so what and we it will run it will be too much. We're going to uh, yeah. too much so, detail. So what, what explain what we've done is yeah. So what we to write it down. Yeah. Sorry that I'm interrupting you. No no no. So um, what we've done is we, we've come up with a formula like all the uh, described that uh, that will be run automatically on YouTube yeah. and this formula will um, tell you on the processing of the video exactly how much copyrighted content has been used in your video and then what that copyrighted content works out to in terms of a percentage of your total video length. So you might upload a video of 10 minutes say and then once you've processed the video uh, the next step in getting the video onto YouTube would be um, analyzing the copyright content. And then it will tell you, it will probably list like, all right, you've used this and this and this song, you've used these different videos, and according to the formula, which is in the description, yeah. um, it will come to 10% of your video yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, would, be, would, would, would then be sent to the copyright holders. So then, based on that, you are then free to work out how many biscuits you want to assign yes, to your yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, as I understand, according to the, the biscuits category. Yeah, because we have the three categories, right? That's right. right. We have the three so how would this work on, for, for say, like the, the, other the sponsored content? Okay. Videos? The sponsored content is, is that's the collaboration between the, 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 the YouTuber and, of course, the, the media company or whatever, you know, advertising company. Mm -hmm. Because it's a collaborative effort, the, the company will usually has their marketing department and it's usually their... Um, their responsibilities within their responsibilities to look at copyright content yes. if they do advertising and stuff like that. Or the brands even themselves could, yeah. could look, look into that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it'll be a collaborative effort and they will send the video for approval because the, the company's name is on it, yes. you know, so their label is on it. So, so in that sense, to yeah, yeah. So, so in that sense, uh, what it seems is happening is that uh, in the collaborative um, projects, the 
the brand or the company that's advertising, would they normally, in the current setup, already make sure that everything is sorted yeah, out yeah, in yeah, terms yeah, of yeah. content? Yeah, because and then once that video is uploaded onto YouTube, the step where the copyright is calculated will then just come to zero. Yeah, because it'll just come the to copyright the content is already yeah, taken care of. Otherwise, they made made a mistake. Yeah, Correct. Otherwise, they are. So Correct. otherwise, they did something. For the for the other other one, yeah, because this one works now according to the biscuit. So how much you charge? That's a percentage. So we talked about that. Correct. And then if you add a zero zero biscuit, right? So, so then the free videos. The free videos for promotional content or for informative content. Yes. If you um, if there are ads that are run on it, right? Then um, you you make you make you make who knows how much ad, ad revenue out of it, but then the percentage will still apply. However, however yeah, much ad revenue you make see. out of it, I see. a percentage of that ad revenue still goes in. So goes you in might, for example, itself. as with creating a video that you intend to sign biscuits on, whether you create a, a video that you intend to sign biscuit, biscuits on, or whether you create a video you intend to make free, you'll go through the same uploading process. You'll go through the same process where it stipulates yeah, so yeah, much yeah, copyrighted yeah. content has yeah, been yeah, used. Yeah. You'll upload it. The only difference would be that the free videos, um, the percentage that was calculated will obviously come from the ad revenue versus with the yeah, biscuit yeah, yeah, videos, yeah, the yeah, percentage yeah, will yeah, come yeah. from how many biscuits you've, yes, you've yeah. earned for your video. Yeah, yeah, so in effect, for, for two of the three categories, the same applies. Yes, basically. Yeah, exactly Just the same Where thing. your re revenue come from. Yeah, the one yeah. is coming from biscuits, the other one is coming, coming from, from ad, ad revenue. Ad revenue. Yeah. And if and if, if the if the YouTuber made the, the the video just being informative and used the material from the grey list or the white list, white list if nothing happens, with the grey list we're talking about the compensation now, right? So then if you use it from the grey list, if the YouTuber doesn't make any money, then neither do you. Yes. That's the grey list. So if they get compensated, you get compensated. If they don't get compensated, it's okay. Yes. As long as they're not exploiting your work, if that's the focus. Yes. All right. I, I think, I mean, that's a very broad nutshell of, of how the system is going to work. We, like we said, we'll have a full yeah, the uh, formula is in the document yeah, the formula um, in, the in the description, not only for this section, but for the, the whole okay, section, yeah. for, for all the sections that we'll be discussing. And the, the formula in the, will be in the description if you want to go into the details. But the idea would be that YouTube will uh, develop a calculator that is part of the uploading process of the video. Yeah, that will there will be a process yeah. which automated. It will automatically yeah, tell will, you yeah. what is um, being you going to be sent to to the um, copyright holders. Yeah, exactly. I think an uh, important next step, um, as we usually do, is to discuss some of the advantages of the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the first advantages that I can think of is that you are giving content creators freedom to access a lot more content yeah 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 the idea is to uh, to to encourage um, it's 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 confidence that to, you you're, you're letting the copyright holders know that listen the, with the new system they will be easily be able to make their revenue back they'll be able to make their money back it's very clear-cut system of a black and a gray or a white list and then this this is gonna in effect if you're a, a YouTuber, you want to make your content, you're a content creator, you have access to these lists. It will give you a lot more tools to work with. Yes. And it will be a lot easier instead of you not knowing at all and have no idea of what's the copyright status of any of this. Yes. So now you will exactly know, yes, no, it's not allowed, blacklisted, it's grey listed, okay, you're allowed to use it, but compensation will yes. be have to taken into consider. Or, hey, it's on the white list, we can, <coughs> we can use whatever. Yeah, so you just have... Uh, uh, so the way I see it is that a YouTube creator would um, go into a database, for example, yes, 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 yes. on YouTube. Maybe they have access to this. Yeah, yeah maybe there's a button that says access uh, content, and in there you can type in, or you can either sc scroll through a list of content, or there there could be a search bar However, yeah. where they could search for content, and then it will tell you where they. They will have access list. to these lists. Yeah. And yeah, exactly where the where, where everything is in the list, and then. You know that would give them so much more tools to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, the point. Uh, yes. A, a second advantage that I can think of is that not only will they have more tools, but it's an easier way for uh, content creators to actually get access to copyrighted information in a legal way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, currently, yeah. if if I am a YouTuber that's reviewing movies and I want to, for example, review Thor Ragnarok. Um, how do I, as a small YouTuber living in a small town, contact production companies yeah, in America just, to ask yeah, them to use? No it's impossible currently for me yeah, to no access yeah, no the, yeah. the copyright attorneys of these people. So the 
the ability for me to to be an honest movie reviewer and actually make money out of yeah, the work yeah. that I do is impossible because yeah. it's just cut off. So in this system, people will be so able your video, to... your video will just be like not as involved. Yeah, or so in this system, people will actually have access to yeah, 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 getting yeah. copyrighted information in a legal way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also at the same time, paying the copywriter what is fair. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And this is then brings to... And, it, and it's up to the, co the, co uh, the, the copyright holder where they decide their... Yeah, and, and, and this brings me, want, you know, yeah. and this brings me to, 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 to the maybe one of the biggest advantages for the copyright holders is that they are able to make passive income off of any easy. Yeah, it's easy. All that they need to do now is they're they're going to be compensated, and, and it's according to a, a you know it's according to a percentage. So and exactly how much is used. So it's it's fair and it's a simple it's a simple thing. It's just you put it up there and you just leave it, and then the money just yeah. comes. All, in. all that you need to do is to move your content over to the gray list. If you want to make money, or move it over to the whitelist, if you if you happy for people to use it for free, or you wishing to advertise your material, or keep it on the blacklist if you wish for yeah, people you, not to use your you content. Like, no, yeah. And uh, you know whether you uh, YouTube decides to pay that royalty monthly or yearly, that you can leave the YouTube channel. Yeah, however, whenever they want to. Yeah, maybe um, one final thing we just need to discuss is um, uh, you know we always need to look at all the the loopholes because you know humanity people <laughs> always take advantage. Yeah. But Carl, maybe uh, we should also then just uh, in closing discuss uh, what systems will be in place if, by accident or intentionally, a YouTuber uses a blacklisted content. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah. If if you use if you use the blacklisted content, then um, ideally a YouTube bot will go through the the video and then overlay a black screen over video content that's been that's been blacklisted and add uh, overlay overlap white noise over like audio content that's been mm. copyrighted and it's been blacklisted. So that's ideally how it would work. Yeah. But then the, 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 the video will still stay up and will still Yeah, it will still, uh, it, it will still stay up and monetize. The idea is that if you added uh, uh, one minute, two minutes of, you know, copyright, blacklisted, copyrighted content, but the other eight minutes is still your stuff, right? It's still your content. Then that's the, those, those, you should still be able to have the other eight minutes available to you and the video should still be up. It should still be able to make money and monetize. So, it's so, a, so in this way, both parties are under kind of it's protected. To pr yeah, yeah, yeah. It's to protect because on the one yeah, hand, yeah. If, if there's footage used that is blacklisted, it's, it's blacked over. So the copyright holder is protected in the sense yes, that yeah, yeah. his there's content used, cannot yeah. be viewed. Yeah, 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 if it's content. audio, it's white noise is over. So yeah, yeah. Your, your, your content is protected yeah, yeah, because no one can hear it. Yeah. But then it also protects the YouTuber who might have created 90% original yeah, exactly. content. Yeah, 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 that's and, the point. And yeah. you don't want to throw the baby out with the yeah, bathroom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This and it's to get rid of the whole video just because there's maybe a small portion yeah, that's copyrighted. Yeah, it's to make it as fair as possible, yeah. yeah. And then obviously um, uh, we, we're going to be talking about uh, the flag system as well. Yes, and, we'll uh, get there, yeah. In the flag system, there, there will be ways for, for um, uh, the YouTube community to also comment on on. on, yes, on, yes. on on ish these issues, but also on issues in general. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we'll get to that in we'll a that. later video. But uh, good day, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our YouTube fix. Uh, today Hello. we're going to get back into the next section, which is the revised flagging system. And uh, as always, we're going to start off by just uh, briefly discussing YouTube's current uh, flagging system. So, Carl, would you take us through that quickly? All right. So. Currently, as I understand it, the uh, YouTube system is that you can, once you have an account, you can uh, you can flag videos, okay. right? So you can flag. There's a there's a few pre uh, pre input uh, categories that they have, but mainly you can pick. What I like about the system is you can pick a, a timestamp, and then you can just write in a description of what 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 exactly uh, you 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 found wrong with in this. Uh, in this timestamp what description you can leave it empty or put it in as far as I understand it now the e yeah that's that's as far as I get it okay um, so what exactly is this new uh, system that you're proposing and as I understand it's also only related to the vi videos that have biscuit value yeah yeah, yeah the, the, the paid videos all right so I'd like to take this system as it currently is but I'd just like to improve it so okay. it's exactly the same thing you can flag people who uh, have an account uh, can flag but now it's just in more detail so right. 
So it's it's just the next version of the one. The an one update. An update, exactly. It's an update. So the main principle is again people can can put up a flag on the on the video that that they're currently viewing and then label uh, find find an offense in there. Okay. So but now they're given greater flexibility. So first of all, because of the biscuit system, only viewers who've paid are now allowed to rate, uh, comment, and as well flag. Okay. So this al already cuts out a lot of people. You can't just jump in on a video and just um, just flag it for just because you feel like it, or you're a troll, or you're a bot, or for whatever reason. Mm. So that cuts out a lot of uh, a lot of um, a, a big weakness of the current mm. system, which is, which is really good, um, and um, and it has the categories, of course. Uh, instead yeah, of talk to us about the categories. How does how does that work? All right. Yeah. The idea is that you don't have just one flag, right? But you have five different types of flags. So the first, uh, and they will be uh, highlighted in degrees of severity okay. of like what offense they have they committed now. So the most severe will be black. The second most severe will be a red color. Mm -hmm. the, then, then the third will be like, okay, it's, it's, there's an offense, but it's not to an extreme order. That'll be orange. Then the yellow flags will just be people putting up flags that just say, listen, the video quality, there's an issue with that, or the length is too long, or the, the content, the topic so was more off. suggestions for they're the content Yeah, creation. they're suggestions, they're not okay. offenses. All right. And then the last one will be a green flag, because that will label, uh, the, the viewers will then label the, the video as a whole, saying, listen, there's no offense. They understand the context and everything was used, nothing was wrong. Okay. All right. And then, um, as I understand it, uh, this new system will also implement timestamp yeah like type system based on the existing exactly system. yeah it would be exactly the same you'll be able to flag it for for whatever offense you you'll feel fine the the details of the of these of these categories have are now obviously linked into the, the oh yeah so so the document what, what, what that we'll say yeah. so, so so what Carl was saying is that we're going to um, put out the the specific categories for the flags in the description yeah. so you can go read up if you want to on for example a black flag what specific well, detail, yeah. um, details or terms of use will need to be broken in order to qualify for a black flag say. Yeah. And um, a way, uh, I mean, obviously in the end of the day, it's up to Google to decide how this would be implemented. But something that, that we've uh, spoken about which could work is um, as a YouTuber or a YouTube viewer goes on to a video to place a flag, for example, um, you want to place a red flag on a video. Uh, before you place the flag, a pop-up will come up saying, um, yeah. Please note that a red flag uh, um, qualifies a video for these and these and these yes, offenses. Yes, yeah, yeah. Are you sure you want to place a flag? Just to make sure that people don't um, use the flags inappropriately, like place black flags where orange yeah, flags yeah, yeah, are yeah. actually uh, more appropriate. This, this, this uh, forces them to be informed. Yes, they can't right. be uninformed of placing the flag and so on. But this is implementation. It will be, it'll come afterwards. All right. Um, maybe next thing to talk about is... Um, Obviously, with people uh, placing flags on the video, uh, overall sentiment will appear. Maybe just talk to us about how that will work. Yeah, the sentiment. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, the sentiment idea is that instead of just having a, having a video at the current system, it's flagged or not flagged. Now there's a degree of what what the status. It sort of has a flag status. Yes. Right. This will always be visible. So on all the videos, all the all the biscuit videos, the paid videos will have a flag status which will be one of the five flags okay. at all times. So it becomes almost like an average of, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, of the sentiment. So there might be three black flags, uh, 10 red flags, three orange flags. The overall sentiment might be red in that case. Yeah, exactly. So it, okay. it's calculated, like on average, what, what <coughs> type of uh, flags have been placed. And then overall, the, the average is calculated. Yeah, and, and, and that way I can see that the um, uh, new viewers coming to videos will also then be able to see what the status of a video is before they, they pay for it. Yes, yes, and they'll be able to decide for themselves, let's say if they're a long time viewer yes. of, of this content creator and they realize, okay, this is a, a red, red flag video uh, with the sentiment, current sentiment, they might want to be involved and pay for the video anyway because they want to be involved in this discussion. In the discussion. What, yes. what is the debate currently? What's, what, why, why is it why flagged? Is it, why is it flagged? Yes, Do they yes. agree with this? Do they not agree with yes. this? Um, that's the idea behind like okay. informing people. Um, and 
the flags, how, how will they work? Will they remain permanently? Uh, are they there for a period of time? How, how does that happen? Yeah, yeah it, will, it will have to be decided ultimately um, by YouTube how long a video will have to be up or so. But the idea is that um, there will be a, a time period which YouTube will designate and then uh, that allows for the the debate and the sentiment to be reached like yes. what what degree of severity is this is this video currently and then give a time for the content creator of that video to be informed so ideally they'll check it and they'll have their live status mm -hmm. of whatever the flag sentiment is that will be reported to them and hopefully they'll step in and quickly mm -hmm. change it mm -hmm. uh, or uh, you know address the video and they won't just leave it out mm -hmm. but the idea is that there will be sort of like a window a time period youtube will have to decide how long and then at the end of that time period youtube will step in and assess the and different and videos. assess of course assess the, the different and then in, uh, at that point video can then uh, video youtube can then at that point decide um, how they want to implement punishment for yes, the, yeah, 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 yeah. the different offences. Yeah, well depending on what your offence and so forth. All right. Yeah. And, um, then, and then, okay, you talked about uh, the resetting of how long these flags yes, are going to be. Yes. The, so the idea is that old flags should be reset at a certain point so that especially after it's been addressed or after it's been assessed. Yes. It's, it's, it should be broader about the same time that YouTube gives time for the the sentiment to be reached, the overall opinion of what yes. the flag status is, and then they assess it, and then it gets reset, so that the video, when the video continues, in the case of where it's not so severe that the, continue, the, the video had to be removed from the platform, then uh, YouTube resets the, the All status, the flags, yeah, basically. so that the new viewers will ha will can, can comment on the new status of, let's yeah, say... Seeing that the old flags issues have been yeah, taken yeah, care yeah, of. That's the idea, ideally, yes, what yes, would ideally, happen. yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, what happens, again, we have to address the fact that we're all human and some people have, uh, have um, bad habits of being trolls. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we also just have to talk about this. Uh, the uh, assholes, yeah. We have yeah, to in, in this section, uh, how, how would a YouTube content creator be able to deal with... Um, Abuse. So, abuse. Yeah, Someone yeah, yeah. who, for example, yeah, yeah. you know, buys a video on purpose simply to go onto yes, the video and to put yeah. black flags yeah, on yeah, purpose. Yeah. How, how, yeah. how does a YouTuber have, have power in the situation? Yes, yeah, and yeah. if so, what is his power? I think the, the very best way to just address this is just, uh, fortunately, we'll have, thanks to the biscuit model, you already have people, they'll have to pay to come, come in at least. So at least you're getting cash for it, right? So then the YouTuber can then decide, listen, are they willing to take this person's trash? Because they're only going to be one voice in the majority. Are they willing to take their money as well as their neg negativity? Or will they go the step further and then they'll just ban them? So yes. they'll have the opinion to just remove them completely. So what will happen is that uh, the person that they've now banned will not be able to at all search this content creator's videos or content. It will be like they don't exist on the platform. Okay. So I that see. way you get rid of your potential customers, so to speak, right? So you get rid of their business, but then you're free of them. And I think that's a fair system that yes. should be it should be uh, should be given to the uh, authority give, given to the content creator. Because if you want to kick someone off of your community, you should absolutely be uh, be allowed to give that free uh, to to exercise that right. Yes, but. Obviously, ideally, uh, you know, we're we're also trusting the YouTube creators to to um, use this uh, this power responsibly. You know, yeah, like but listen, even if you kick off like half your half your audience, you won't get the cash. That's the point. Uh, if I they see. if they can't see. see you, they can't see. see your videos. You don't get their money. So, That's right. so if you feel like so it, it, you it, have it, a lot of haters, it's a self, right? it, it's a self correcting exactly, system. Exactly. Basically. If you have a lot of haters on, but you feel like listen, they're paying me. They're paying me. Let the haters hate, you know. At, yes. at least they're, you know, they're doing it with their wallets. It's not just they're just coming up free. But for this free. makes sure that if there's this one person, if they're that, pushing it, they're that's pushing, pushing it. it. They're absolutely pushing then, it. Then, then you have you the feel power like, as a creator. Yeah, you feel like, oh, you know what? I don't need your cash. Get get off. Get yes, off it. Yes. You're ruining everything. Just yes. just no. All right. Cool. Um, so. I'm not sure if we mentioned mentioned this before, but um, just for 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 the sake of covering all our bases, um, uh, each YouTuber who who buys a video mm -hmm. would then get one flag, right? Oh yeah, yeah, oh the limits, yes, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. You can't 
you, you can't, you will have uh, uh, opportunity to place only one flag. Yeah, so you yes. can't, for example, yeah, you place can't a black no, flag and a red yeah, flag. Yeah, you can't spam flags. No, 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 no. You have the one flag. Yes. You but you also, flag. it's completely up to you whether you want to use a flag or not. You don't necessarily have to. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't so if you, for to. example, um, I guess that's a watching, neutral. I guess that's a yeah, neutral if, sort if, of disposition. If you're neutral, yeah. if you may be new to a channel and uh, you're not really invested in the content creator yet, and there's some sort of discussion going on 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 some specific issue, yeah, specific but it doesn't affect you, or you're not versed in it. You don't. You don't have to. You have to express flag. your opinion. Yeah. Okay. But you have the right to it once you've paid. Yeah. Correct. So you have the right to, yes, to yes, enter yes. the discussion yeah, yeah, yeah. if, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, if yeah. you wish to. Okay. Great. Well, I mean, I can think of a lot of advantages to the system. Yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe we should just quickly briefly speak to um, okay. some of them. Sure, sure. Um, the first one, obviously, is that uh, the YouTube content creators, his own community, votes on his videos. Yeah. Maybe yeah, you can yeah, just yeah. expound on that a bit. Yeah, yes. That, that, that just means that it's a, a higher degree of accuracy. Because if you have your audience that's already following you or that's invested in you, that understands you, that's, that's your community. Yes. That yes. Their judging will be more accurate than someone coming in from outside, from the outside. Maybe uh, you, uh, a YouTube content checker who's just supposed to check because it's their job. Yeah, maybe he doesn't understand the, Con the, the heart of yeah, the yeah, YouTube yeah, content creator exactly, or yes. understand where he's coming from or the types of videos he's made in the past. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas um, you would tend to think that a community of viewers who's invested in a YouTuber yes, yeah, would yeah. also be more sensitive in placing harsher flags. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it, it makes sure that when there is something placed that is uh, of concern, that it's a legitimate concern. Yeah, yeah, that it's... It's from your own community. Yeah, you can count on that, yeah. The, the data is more accurate. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I can actually think of another way that the data is also accurate, and that is just based on the theory of large numbers, that the more sample you have, the more accurate the, the result becomes. Yes, yeah, and yeah. in this case, where... Instead of having maybe you know four or five YouTube executives sitting behind a video going, okay, this video is flagged or this video is flagged or this video should be removed or you know whatever the case might be, now you have potentially millions of individual viewers each placing a what flag, they yeah, assume yeah. to be uh, a flag appropriate to the offense yes, that's yeah, been yeah, taken. Yeah. At the end of the day, the overall collective will will give hone the in. true sentiment yeah, well, hone of, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. of the video. So in that way the result is also more accurate. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not just accurate because it's your people commenting on your videos or your followers it's commenting. It's a large community. It's a larger, it's a yeah. it's, it's a larger sample yes, of yeah. people that are uh, giving their feedback. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, I, what I can also see with the system is that um, because the, I don't know if you mentioned this before, that the, the flags, uh, the sentiment on the video will be updated live. Yes, yes, right? yeah. yeah, we did, we did speak on yes. this. Yeah. So in this way, a YouTube content creator, when he goes onto his creator studio, uh, he has that information, you, has that information yeah, yeah, yeah. available to him on the fly. So if he posted a video, let's say a week ago, he can on the fly see uh, what the general sentiment yes, of yes, the video yeah, yeah. is based on how many people voted. Yeah, and there's the degrees of offense. Yes, so and you can exactly also see what, what, what he did wrong. Wow, right? oops, my, my video I posted last week has a black sentiment. I need to see what's going yeah, on here, I need what to is, fix. Yeah, what's going and on. he'll then be able to go into, on his, into his video and he'll be able to go read up on the flags. Yeah, what, ex what exactly was, what was exactly wrong. What exactly was wrong. And he can potentially yeah, fix the problem. Yeah, ideally fix it before, the before, YouTube, before gets YouTube has to intervene, yes. Yes. And that obviously, I mean, the final and probably the most advantageous uh, uh, advantage that I can see is that this takes a lot of pressure off YouTube. Yeah, yeah. It because it's to make YouTube's job easier, yeah. yeah it's because sorting through everything. Because yeah, now yeah. YouTube might, uh, let's say the assessment period is a month that, that, uh, that YouTube gives videos to build up sentiment before they step in. Um, what might happen is that a video might start off in the first couple of days of the month with a bad sentiment, but end the month with It'll change, no yeah. sentiment yeah, because changes, in the meantime, yeah, yeah. The actual that YouTuber yeah, yeah, yeah. has gone and fixed the yeah, issues and the sentiment has yeah, changed. Yeah. Ideally, that would be Which the case. means that yes. by the end of the set period, in this yeah, case yeah. maybe a month, YouTube might not have any videos to, yeah, yeah. to, to look which through. Is, ideally, that would be the yes. case. And the ones that, that they need to intervene are probably videos where the content creators aren't that interested, in which case that can also be addressed. Well, um, thank you, Carl. Thank you guys for joining us. That is, thank in a nutshell, uh, what we're thinking about implementing on the flag system. 
uh, as we mentioned before in the description, we'll have uh, a more detailed write yes, out yeah, of yeah, the yeah. different flags and what more specific, specific, more specific, yeah, yeah and, 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 and what specific offenses relate to specific flags so that people appropriately apply flags. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone, welcome back uh, to this next Hello. installment of our YouTube fix. And tonight we're going to discuss the revised tagging system. And uh, as always, Carl, I think a good place to start is to maybe discuss the um, current YouTube tagging system, um, how it works, but also some problems All right, involved okay. with the current system. All right, okay. So currently, how uh, the YouTube, YouTube uh, uh, algorithm works or the recommended system works, it looks at keywords. It's okay. based on Google's uh, search engine, obviously. So it looks at keywords and tags, which we are now going to talk about. The problem with this system is that you can literally make anything a title, anything a keyword, and anything a tag. So this just means you can do, you know, whatever you write, that's a tag. Whatever mm -hmm. you put down, that's a keyword. So what ends up happening is the viral stuff gets pushed up. So it's not about categorization or specifying what your video is actually about. It's just about putting in a word or a name or a number or a tag mm -hmm. that's going to get it promoted or pushed up to the systems, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how it works is it, it promotes the viral stuff and or, um, you know, stuff like a oh, challenge or, you know, new or you won't believe or, or epic or, you know, silly stuff like mm -hmm. that gets overused completely. Mm -hmm. So it's open to abuse and then uh, we'll talk a bit about the, the, the looping so that if you have a popular video, it just it's just popular. Yeah. So you're on top of the recommended, and then you just get looped, right? You just and that's get because and that's because YouTube, uh, if I understand it correctly, from the, the the viewer side, YouTube will actually if you for example if you watch a video on a on a, a race for example between two vehicles, yeah, 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 yeah. Then YouTube will once you've watched that video, will go and recommend the most popular more race videos, yeah, more yeah. race videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it. It won't necessarily give a chance for maybe a smaller channel to to be yeah, recommended. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. recommends the most popular yeah, 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 video, yeah. and it just keeps keep skipping on like that. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So you you sort of get into the circuit, this loop of just the most popular videos, right? Yes. So the average user of YouTube, if you just come on and whatever you know topic you sort of pick from the very beginning, it's like having a big pizza pie, right? Mm -hmm. And and you just have one slice. Because only the top videos yeah, are the yeah, ones yeah, that yeah. All the other videos are just like obscured. Anything below a couple of, you know, like a million views, they're not even, you know, they're not even considered. Yeah. Like it, it's. Uh, so, 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 so in, a, in effect, what you're saying is there's no way to view those videos unless you specifically search for their title. Yeah, yeah. You have to either go completely manual, you know, and type in specifically. That's how you get out of that loop. Yes. But then again, watch three or four of those videos. Just a ton of that one specific video that you watch get okay. just gets recommended. And uh, as I understand, is this um, algorithm is al it's also updated once a day or something, where every day you go back to watch something new, it will rework the suggestions that are sent to your channel. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, I think it's just live. I don't even think it's a per day. I just, it just happens. Okay. One, you watch one video and everything changes. Yes. But it becomes so chaotic that it's you know there's almost no control over like. If you are uh, from the user perspective, mm -hmm. how do you specify what you like? It's sort of difficult. If you have no, you can't because you, it's yeah, all automated. Yeah, if you watch like three different categories or topics, it just keeps changing. It's just so you know volatile, yes. I guess. Yes. What I have seen YouTube have, 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 have implemented are, are on your home page to have these bars where where you know it would have suggestions based on different categories, but even those are completely automated. They're also random. Yeah. They're random and automated. Yeah, and random. you might have watched one lecture on quantum mechanics, for example. Now, all of a sudden, your feed is full of quantum <laughs> mechanics lectures. <laughs> and it's not necessarily, <laughs> it's not even necessarily the best lectures. It's yeah, yeah, the, no, yeah, yeah. It's just the videos that are the most popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it seems that YouTube goes, works on this premise that popular equals quality. Yeah, that's not just the art, which is obviously not true, yes. right? Which is obviously not true. And it pushes this idea that once you get to the top, right, of your bracket or your category or whatever, then it just gets looped. It, that just means that it doesn't matter really how good your video is because you're popular and a couple of your videos are popular 
You more just, people will watch it. Yeah, more, more people, people will watch and it. And it's sort of automatic. So yeah. everybody has this rush of like trying to get their videos in the top bracket. And then once you're on the top, you just forget about it. And it's, that, it's automatic. Yeah, it and, just and gets that obviously uprising. encourages people to start taking part in this clickbait. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they create crazy titles of, like you said, crazy yeah, 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 tags, yeah, yeah. the most unbelievable, as the craziest. Ab yeah, I abuse it as much as possible. Just so that you can get the views. Because the more views you have, the more popular you are, the more chances that you'll show up in someone's feed. You get in that circuit and then, and then you then get into that circuit. And then it's just, and then that just you can sit back and just leave it and all just. And, yeah. and I can imagine that just creates this massive divide between the top 1%, the cream mm. of the crop mm. videos that YouTube assumes are the cream of the crop because of their views, and the videos at the bottom that are trying to make an inroad that can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. How? So there's this massive. Um, divide between the overexposed videos and the underexposed yeah, videos. Yeah, exactly. Yes, that's so exactly the problem. So, right? in a nutshell, that's what we're trying to fix with this yeah, revised yeah, tag yeah. system. Yeah, you want to... You so, want in a nutshell, what, what is in essence the new tag system? All right, okay. So, if we have to just break it down to one thing, it will just be... It will focus on the tags, right? Which is the categorization of the videos, and it will be limiting those. Okay. Because as, as, as we said at the very beginning, right now you can make anything uh, a keyword and anything a tag. You can add a tag, but it can be anything. Okay, it so you can literally say, belly flop mishmash is a tag. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Type, type any, it in. Anything, anything can, be a, anything can be a tag. And yeah. then now you have the problem of, as a, as a content creator, what do you make? So you want to get to the top, so you use abusive, what, whatever, right? Oh, but it's not tags that will, 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 will encourage clicking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, viral tags. So you're not actually categorizing your video to make it specific for uh, to your make audience. it searchable. Yeah, for your audience. Yeah, for whatever your audience actually, whoever yes. your audience actually is. Yes. And so it's not specific. And as uh, someone who wants to, you're the the viewer now. How how do you use what tags do you type in or how do you from what direction do you come? You just sort of follow a click, you know, route somewhere yes. or unless someone tells you about a specific video yes. or so forth you, or manually search, you're just going to sort of follow whatever YouTube gives at you. So yes. it's, there's a big disconnect from the best analogy would say that the, the fix would, would now look at limiting those tags, yes. right? Forcing uh, the content creator to make, make, uh, make the tags, make use of the tags. So they can't, it's right now it's an option. You can add tags or you can't add tags. So it will, you, it will force the categorization of the tags and then the, the uh, viewer will also be able to just be specific for those tags. It's like, a, it's like you're going into a restaurant, mm -hmm. right? And then you have a menu as well as the chef has the same menu. You yes. have the same menu. There's a synchronicity right there. Yes. So then you know what, what kind of food to order and what they know yeah, what so food to you, make. You, you know, if you order Egg Benedict, the, it, the yeah. chef has the same egg benedict yeah, in exactly. mind and yeah, gives yeah. that to you. Yeah. Where it seems the current system at YouTube, if we use the same analogy, mm -hmm. is as if you're going into a restaurant and you write your own menu of food that you might yeah. want, and the chef is writing his yeah, own exactly. menu, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you kind of hope that both of you say the same thing at some point so that you can get the food you want. Yeah, that's not you, you approach YouTube and you think, oh, I want to watch uh, a cat chasing a furball. And now you type that into YouTube and you have to hope that someone oh, when tags, someone else tags cat, cat chasing cat a purple, chases purple yeah, or use the keyword yours. or whatever, yeah. Because there might be a video that is exactly according to what you want, but it wasn't tagged the same. It wasn't that, yeah. There's so no system to accommodate for that or to make that easier yes. or to... So, so, so basically what, what we're saying is um, taking the tagging system from a complete random just add whatever you want to suggesting to Google to come up with a set number of tags. How that would play out, that's up to Google to figure out. Like how many tags there how would many be. How many tags there would be. But the idea is that there's a limited amount of tags. Yes, yeah, so, that, so, so that both content creators... Know what content, to pick from, yeah. Yeah, the, the content creators and people viewing the content both will basically be looking have at the, the same, same menu. Yeah, have the same menu. Uh, yeah. When searching for videos and when assigning tags to videos. So, um, we've spoken about this briefly. Maybe we can just get into this in a little bit more detail. All right, all right. What would this revised tagging system look like for the person approaching YouTube, maybe creating his first account. How would that look? Okay, okay. So the, the idea is then redoing the how your homepage is, right? Yes. So we're revising the homepage with, with a system. So now when you go to your homepage, it's just a bunch of recommended stuff mm -hmm. and the bars, as we've mentioned, yes. they're just also random as well. So it's, it's based off of what now currently is available. 
Uh, it's just having a, a customized approach. So now you will have uh, the main, you will have, you can create custom bars essentially. Okay. For how many you want, or if you want like 10, you can add 10. If you want two, you can add two. You start with complete blank and okay. you can add bars as you go. Okay. So the categorization will be the first four, right? Will be, um, oh no, there, there will be four categories, right? Mm -hmm. And each one will work differently. So that, so the first one would be like a YouTube recommended bar, which is exactly how YouTube now works. Okay, right? so that, is, that those, would just those be a will bar. Be, those will be videos will be spat out uh, exactly like YouTube's recommended currently, right? Trending videos. So, so, so basically the way you would interact with YouTube if you didn't have an account today. When you go to YouTube, it has a bunch of recommended videos and the YouTube bar would basically work that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There will okay. be a YouTube bar and it will work exactly like that. Yeah, how, how it currently works. Okay. Then there's another one which is like focus on a channel. Okay. Right? So you would type in whatever channels you subscribe to or whatever. And then those videos will And then those videos will, will come in. Yeah, will do those yes. videos will pop up. Okay. okay. And then there will be a history bar, right. which will be like, what videos have you watched? Uh, so it's basically a search history. Yeah, so yeah. So it's like a list search all history. of the videos that yeah, you've yeah, watched. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Yeah. In case you want to go back and maybe show someone something you've watched. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It will list that. Yes, for you. yeah, yeah. So okay. it'll have the access. And then the other bar will be this is now the one that we're focusing on. This is the cate category bar, right? Okay. So then this bar, you can add categories. So there's a. Based on the menu that, that, that yeah, has been specified. Yeah, yeah by based on the limited amount of tags that you have and the content creator yes. has. So this will help you. So then you start off by saying, a categorization you have a limited amount of five yes right so the uh, you have a main topic a main category tag and then four maximum subcategories just to refine your search yeah so that so that again from the content creator side that you don't abuse it and just add all the tags yes so that you get everybody yes. searching your video even though it's not it, it's not even related. not related yeah so the idea is then so that you're on the same page when you create uh, the content creator he creates the he creates a video adds adds as specific as possible the tags that are now mm -hmm. uh, adds those tags that from the limited database mm -hmm. and that you as the uh, uh, with your home page you the viewer adds uh, the category bar that's that that uh, has the category your main category plus one or two so for example you might have a main category of sport yeah and a subcategory could be um, tennis and a subcategory of that could be Wimbledon yeah, 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 subcategory yeah, yeah. of that could be Nadal. Yeah, or, or doubles, of that could or be doubles or singles. Or doubles whatever. or singles. So it, it's a way to, re to to refine your search on that specific bar yes, yeah. so that the videos that get loaded in there yeah, are, yeah. are relevant. Yeah, it, it uses the technology, that the search technology, that uh, the same search engine that uh, YouTube, YouTube currently has uses. currently, yes. but it uses these categorizations as search parameters. All right. So to guide it, to focus, to hone yes. it in, right? Yes. So uh, it's sort of a balance between YouTube's current system, which is just a completely automatic and completely manual, specifically little what in your search bar, what specific you're writing. Yeah, so, so this, this is, is sort a of marriage like a, of the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like so. A so, so if I understand correctly, what, what basically would happen is a, a YouTuber would, um, uh, or a YouTube content, whether whether you're a content creator or someone just viewing YouTube, you'll have your own channel, ideally. You would interact with your channel or with your home page, you'd come in and you'd say, all right, my home page is blank. What videos do I want to watch? You will say, create a bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once you say create a bar, it will give you the four options. Yes, you know, yeah. whether you want to create a YouTube bar, which is just the recommended, yeah, whatever. Uh, automatic recommendations, whether you want to create a content creator bar or a channel bar, channel like bar you yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. whether you want to create then a bar of all your history, yeah, or yeah. if you want to create a um, category bar. Yes, Those yeah, are yeah. the four options that yeah, you yeah, will be yeah, able yeah. to and you can have as many as you want, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. So you can have way. you can have one of each of the YouTube bar, the history bar, and the um, channel bar, yeah. and you can have ten category bars. Yeah, if you and, want, and, to, and, yeah, and all the ten category bars that cover the categories, on different that, categories. Yeah, that, that you, you care about. Yeah, and okay. then the idea is that you have also um, as you will first have the categories, right? And alongside that, you will have technical parameters. All right. So, so just tell us about the technical parameters. Okay. So the technical are parameters are literally just like video length. Right, how long uh, it is, how many minutes, or or like the what cost of the, the video, the biscuit price. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So and again, as th for that, you will have be able to add as many as you want because yes. it's just technical. It yes. applies to any video. It's yes. just it's maybe just you know the popularity of the video. Yeah. The, views, the flag color, views, for example. All flag status. Yes. Okay, that's great. Um, next, let's move on to the content creators. 
um, how would this flagging system influence the content creators? And we've touched on it briefly, okay, yeah, yeah. but let's go into a little bit more detail on how the content creators will be oh, affected. All right, okay, the main, the main thing is that, it will ex that uh, the you want to move away from the focus of abuse the system to just get your videos up mm -hmm. and get exposure to the point of being as specific as possible because you know your menu is exactly the same as the audience's mm -hmm. menu. And you know that the system will be based off they're going to deliberately create their uh, recommended bars that that's going to focus in on looking at your categories mm. because you want to you want to play in your lane as much as possible Correct. knowing what your videos is actually mm. about because you know the audience is going to be in that lane Correct. instead of just having a sort of a free for all yes. and you breaking all the rules because everybody else is <coughs> breaking all the rules you Correct. Instead of just exposure, you want to be in a categorization yes. because you know your audience is there. Yes. So what kind of video are you making? It's for that audience. Yes. Be specific. Get the tags down. Yes. That's going to that's gonna, uh, have the same... Yeah, like exactly. You'll just be in the, on the same page yes. and will make sure your videos that cover the topic for your audience will reach your audience Yes. instead of just anybody. Yes. And I think we maybe touched on this before, but um, just, to, just for clarity's sake, the YouTube content creators will not have a choice. They will have to put categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is forced. Because yes. currently it's, it's forced. not forced. Yeah, you can you can leave it out. Yeah. But 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 in this case, it will force every video on YouTube will then need to at least have one category. Yeah, a minimum a minimum of one. That's a main category, mm -hmm. and four other up to four four other subcategories. Subcategories. So right. a total of five. Yes. I mean that's specific enough. Yes, so. I think so too. All right. So um, as always, let's um, look at a couple of of advantages of changing the system. Um, one that one that I can think of that we've touched on briefly before is is the fact that this is kind of like a middle road yeah, between yeah. having the current system which is completely automated mm. and you as a user has n has no real choice in what is being presented yeah. to you uh, versus a completely manual system where there's no suggestions and you literally have to go and search for the, in word the for name word. of the yeah, word title for word. of the video to find something. Those are both extremes which I think don't work. And uh, yeah, I mean, this, yeah. this example uh, or, or this suggestion brings both those extremes to the middle where you allow YouTube to suggest things to you, yeah, but yeah. based on your terms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, on the parameters you want it. So how specific you want it or how broad you want it. Yes. That just gives you uh, the ability to, again, just have your own, your own preferences and your own customized uh, categories and your own what you like instead of just, okay, you know, YouTube, just, just go for it. And YouTube just has to assume based on whatever you watched. The recent, most recent video we watched, okay, just spit out a couple of recommended stuff. Yes. Every single time. So, yes. um, it's, it's just, it, this is, this is, this is exactly a middle ground of, yes. I mean, you'll still have with a recommended bar, YouTube recommended bar, you'll still have access to, if you're not entirely, random yeah, in, if you're not entirely sure, you just YouTube, you can still have one where YouTube just spits out random trending content or trending whatever. content. Maybe you don't know about this trending yeah, 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 yeah. YouTube creator, and then you can watch a video if you like it. You can create yeah. a category for him. Yes, you can be or a specific. channel yeah, 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 yeah. bar for him, exactly. for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, another example or advantage that I can see is that it will limit. And we've also touched on this before. Uh, it will limit the. Um, opportunity YouTube content creators have to abuse the system yes yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. they will be limited to five tags yes yeah, yeah, yeah so because they're limited to five tags they if they know that each tag matters and if they place their tags inappropriately their viewers will not receive their video yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. on the viewer side he is placing specific categories onto his yeah, video yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you are someone that makes videos on cars you're not going to tag your video cooking <laughs> For example, uh, yeah, yeah, you were. So that would be stupid because yeah. your your audience is not going to put those categories yeah, into the, their yeah, into yeah, their yeah. category. They're not going to, yeah. So, so, so it will and also not get your rid of. Yeah, it's also not your target yeah, audience. Yeah, they it, don't it, care. It's, it's automatically going to get rid of the clickbait. Uh, type yeah, it moves videos, away from it. Yeah. All these these extravagant thumbnails of yeah, know, yeah, no, 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 yeah, people no. trying to lure you into watching a video that you're yeah, already interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it will it will move towards getting your target audience. That's the idea. Yeah. Not it, it's supposed to be descriptive. It's yes. not supposed to be exploitative. Yes. So it moves to it yeah. moves towards that. And maybe the the biggest advantage, and we've also chatted about this one, is the fact that both the content creator and the viewer 
will both use use the same menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll have the so if you are searching for eggs Benedict, the chef is making eggs Benedict. Eggs Benedict, yeah, 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 exactly yeah. what you yeah, looking yeah, yeah. for. Instead of having vague things that you kind of hope will match up. Yeah, you hope. Yeah, you hope you get you go you create your video and you tag it correctly yeah. for your keywords or whatever. Yeah. Of the system ideally will move towards just focusing on the tags. Yes. So it won't even the, the keyboards won't be a. And uh, um, if, if if I um, a factor. S s sum up the system, um, uh, the way I understand it from what you've explained, um, the system will also be more focused on searching via the tags as opposed to Google keyword searches. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Hopefully it will move away from those keywords because a keyword you can make anything, you know, it yeah. will still be, the tags are a concrete. So for know, that solid reason, um, yeah, it, it's a solid foundation because you're yeah, going to yeah. specify the limited number yeah, of tags. Yeah. So people won't necessarily have to rely so much on a description or a specific title for a video. That is more, um, it's not as important for the searching function anymore. Yeah, yeah. The tags, I mean, the tags will the have tags more will weight. The tags will solely be, yeah, yeah, yeah. be responsible for the for the searching function. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It'll just make it easier across the board. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Carl. Thank you again yeah, for thank joining you us. Um, join us again for our next installment. Um, until then, thank you. Goodbye. Hi everyone. Welcome back to our proposed fix for YouTube. Hello. Tonight we'll be we'll be discussing the revised age restriction system. Yeah. And maybe as always, Carl, let's start by discussing what's going on in YouTube currently as far as the age restriction system goes. All right. Um, the, the the main point or the main uh, the main focus of the age restriction, why I wanted to change it, is that when I when I looked into it, I just saw that there's it's like a switch. There's an on off switch. Switch. There's only one. Uh, level of age restriction which is 18 plus mm -hmm. for whatever content and then the main thing about that is that once you 18 plus you can either as an uploader check check it whether it's uh, age restricted or not but there's no degree it's just 18 plus and then once it's 18 plus no ads are put on it from so you get no ad revenue so in other words why would you ever do it yeah, so it, it doesn't really encourage people I mean, to yeah, apply you know, and I'm, yeah, and I mean, there's there's videos all over the place on YouTube with various technically, if you have to look at it, come on, you know, are they all really, you know, not 18 plus? Come on. Yeah. So there needs to be a better system. So the system seems like, uh, as if there's a bit of a, a flaw currently. No, yeah, I mean, there's such a huge gap. It's either on or off. I mean, and age restriction is more, you know, it's more technical than that. Yes. And I mean, if you just look at the way movies work, there's so many different ages. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, YouTube's also obviously a video-based yeah, platform, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. the same setup should actually apply. Yeah, I, I don't know why YouTube didn't. Uh, taking taking it straight from the, the film sort of system mm -hmm. would make almost like super mm -hmm. things, so what they thought the system... But from um, from what I understand uh, in your research, you, you did some, um, some digging into the... ESRB system. Yes, I did. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I, I explain briefly to to all of us what exactly the system is and how it works. Okay, where does it come from? Okay, okay. so it's the uh, electronic. Is it sports board racing? I think something like that. I'm okay. not sure. Anyway, it's a board set up to rate video games. Right. Okay. It's exactly an age restriction system, but it's focused and concentrated on video games. So because I have a video game background, mm -hmm. I, I'm aware of this, and um, it's. So I, I did I dug through it a bit to see okay how does it work went to their site and checked it and I realized that their system is actually the most complete essentially there's a okay. lot of categories and they go through a lot of stuff so okay. it's uh, it's there's a lot more there they at least check more factors and so forth mm -hmm. um, so I thought okay listen uh, if I'm going to use any system to adopt it let's just try let's just look at their system okay uh, how see how their system works and, and looking into their system briefly. It, it seems that they have five basic categories. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they have everyone, yeah. 10 plus, teen, mature, and adult, yes. correct? Yeah, 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 if I remember it correctly, I mean, yeah. Okay, and, and then, then, then they basically... Like adult only, yeah, so yes. it's even plus. And uh, obviously they, they assess a, a, a game and then based on um, different requirements yeah, they have and, many cat and they categories, have, they, have many categories they, yeah. they decide in which Category section the, yeah, 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 the, 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 the game would fall, and that protects, obviously, both the video game players from from unnecessarily viewing content that they might not have yeah, wanted yeah. to view. Interacting with content that 
they might Cause, want Because that's that. the big thing about gaming, you're yes. interacting with it. Yes. So. But it also protects the, the video game creators. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, if you from, from lawsuits, yeah, and stuff yeah. If you want to know why the board was set up, it was deliberately set up because <coughs> they got sued. Um, Which and is understandable. Yeah, and they got sued and they got into trouble, and then they told the they told them, listen, you either create a board that regulates yourself, or you know, or we or the governments are going to mm -hmm. step in and they're going to they're going to apply uh, restriction and censorship and so forth. Yes. So recent recently, now unfortunately, there's been issues with with like gambling and stuff like that mm -hmm. regarding the ESRB, but it's a, it's a long story. We're not gonna go into it. I just use them as a model for as adapting. For model. adapting okay. so. so I guess the logical next question would be, uh, how would this system be adopted yeah, yeah, and then yeah. updated for the yeah, yeah, pla yeah. platform? Because obviously video games it's are games, yeah, yeah, interactive, yeah. whereas videos you just consume with your eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. videos are just, you just look at yeah, them. So, so, so how is that system um, um, adopted or yeah, updated? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, changed. Okay, so um, I think let's just quickly mention the main reason for now having a more specific age restriction is in general, it's just better. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is now because of the best fits, right? Okay. It's because you're buying a video and you're spending money. You don't want to spend money on a video that it you unintentionally wasn't for the age rating that you like wanted to consume. You know, mm -hmm. like different levels of content. There is something like that. You didn't want to. You you weren't sure about the explicitity of the of the um, of the content. Let's say, for example, they're talking about a topic mm -hmm. that you're actually interested in, but you realize, whoa, they're using very strong language and and that's not actually what you wanted. This is to inform you ahead of time, mm -hmm. especially when you start paying. Because right now, you go on a video and you don't like it, you just leave, you lose nothing. Yeah, there's nothing at stake. Yeah, yeah so you, you don't, it's, it's, it's not that it's severe, it's not that There's bad. more responsibility involved from, from YouTube's side to make sure that when you engage with the video that you've bought, that you get exactly what you yeah, paid. Yeah, 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 that you're informed. Yeah. Yes, and that includes, like we've mentioned in one of the previous sections, the, the one minute per 10 minute video length of the content creator describing what the video is about. But it's also, and maybe more importantly, includes the age restrictions. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you might have a video uh, for a company like Budweiser, for example, that uh, is in collaboration with a YouTuber, and that content might not be suitable for yeah, the kids who are six, seven years old. Yeah, it's technically you should be so of legal age. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, yeah. so those videos need to have yeah. have the, the age restriction on it. Mm. Um, for the, the the most important reason to protect YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it acts as a waiver almost yeah, yeah, to protect yeah. YouTube. Yeah, so I, th so I think currently they just have the on and off thing, yeah. just just sort of as okay, it's just <coughs> in there. But if you're going to be more serious and more technical, especially when you, when you're going to have users start paying, you need that. Correct. You need that. Okay, so we've mentioned that. Now let's go to the implementation. Yes. Right. Okay. So I borrowed the I borrowed the system that from ESRB. And then, in general, they're looking at. I thought, okay, the four topics to pick out. What as are the categories for Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, d I decided to d d base this one off of four categories, mm -hmm. right? And levels of that category. So the four categories, first of all, are violence, mm -hmm. like how much violence is now depicted, or the details. The details are in the description below. Like it's going to be. Yeah, we, we, so we, 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 it's a very, it's we're going to go longer. through it in a nutshell. Yeah, for it's, it's going to be in video. general, just to inform yes. you, like what how it works. So it's there are there are uh, levels of. What are the levels of uh, violence? What are the levels of sexual content or references? Mm -hmm. uh, drug use or references? And then as well, strong language and like profanity. So how much, what are the levels? So a level is how much of it I is in it. If, if there is, uh, the, in, in terms of frequency, severity and intensity of each of these. Okay, okay. so then, right. then you de declare a level of either it isn't included, so it's none, or low, or medium, or high, and that will determine in which category. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe let's let's talk about these categories because they they're very similar to the ESRB yeah, yeah. Um, categories, but we, we, we've come up with four in essence. So yeah. that is ten and up, uh, fifteen and up, seventeen and up, and nineteen and, and, up. 19 and up. Maybe just in a nutshell, Carl, just a, a, let's go through each one of these and just give you an idea of how those categories would right. apply to them. So, how would the 10 and up look, for example? Okay, so the 10 and up has low violence, mm -hmm. right, levels, and crude humor at most, like that's okay. it. But no strong language, uh, no no sexual content or references, or no uh, drug references, I thought. Okay, so basically what that one looks at is, it's just... Um, it's just from 10 and up, so yeah. It's just crude, crude joking, and if there's some violence, yeah, some violence. Then, then that video would get the 10 yeah, plus yeah. rating. All right, and uh, 15 plus, how would that one look? Okay, so this is medium levels of violence and uh, low levels of sexual content, 
and uh, low levels of strong language. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, lastly, there's no drug references at all. Okay. Because again, it's under. Okay, so, 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 so we see now what you mean with the scale in terms of yeah, the yeah. violence, the frequency and the intensity yeah, of severity, the violence yeah, yeah, yeah. and severity goes up a notch when you move yeah, from 10 plus yeah, to 15 yeah, plus. Yeah, it just keeps going like yes. higher. The next one is 17 plus. Correct. That's high levels of violence, medium drug use and reference, medium sexual content references, and medium strong language use. Okay. That's right. And then 19 plus is the top tier. Yeah, yeah, top tier okay. high levels of violence, high levels of drug use, high levels of sexual content, high levels of okay. drug use, and so on. So you get the point, it's just more severe yes, yes, every time. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, um, maybe the next thing we can uh, highlight is how, how would this system be implemented onto the YouTube pla platform and uh, as we've done in the past we've looked at the content creators and as well as the content consumers so let's maybe start with the the content creators how would the content creators engage with the system okay so um, we'll move over to uh, the system now where you it's optional you can go into advanced I think it's an advanced settings and then pick a, a, a age restriction on or off so 18 plus on or off I think now we should enforce it like it must you mm -hmm. must pick one of the four categories for whatever video you're making doesn't matter what are the categories whether it's sponsored content free or biscuits mm -hmm. it doesn't matter like uh, all of them need an age restriction so when you as the content creator you're uploading it you must pick one of the four okay uh, yeah you must so it's an informed okay so, so so possibly what that would look like is a content creator would upload a video and this would then be an additional step to the upload so yes yes yeah, 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 yeah. maybe right at the end you say um, what is the age restriction on your video? Yes, so yeah, you which one? Yeah, yeah. And in order to um, educate the YouTubers, uh, maybe there's a pop-up or there's a link where they can go in and similarly you guys can, as well in the description, go read the the full list of criteria and categories for each age, age restriction so in that more, yeah, more you make an informed yeah, yeah, yeah. decision when you're placing that yeah, age yeah, restriction yeah. on your video. All right, so, um, and I also understand that this age restriction will uh, apply to all videos across the yes, three yeah, categories. Yes, yeah, yeah, across the categories. So for the it business videos, which one. the sponsored videos, yeah, 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 and yeah. the free videos, yeah. all of them would, would yeah. have to uh, uh, adhere to this yes. new update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, next, let's talk about the, the content consumers. How would a content consumer engage with this, this system? Okay, so uh, I think the, fir the, the easiest way to implement some sort of um, barrier would be to just use if you create a, an account mm -hmm. for your age what, okay. what is your age um, what is your age um, what is like your birth date you know yes. what, do you, what do you put that's in currently a, a, a one of the things that youtube asks you anyway yeah okay yeah so so you use that sort of system if it's above if it's above what it's calculated you know your age then it will maybe inform you with a pop-up ask you con to continue it uh, gives you a it basically it you, informs it, you. It gives, it gives you a warning, warning. So if you choose to ignore it, I mean, you know, then then it's your fault. Yes. The whole point is just to protect people who unintentionally don't so want. So it's similar in in sense to, for example, if you go to a, a beach or a pool and they have a waiver saying uh, swimming at own risk. Sort of, sort of the same. This is just to remove the liability from YouTube yeah, 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 onto yeah, the shoulders yeah, yeah, that's of these the people. Yeah. Yes. Um, how would this apply to to the the free and the sponsored videos maybe just an icon or something yeah i mean look look them they will have uh, because the content creator already uploaded and they assigned the correct the we we hope it's the correct one mm -hmm. um, then they'll give the they'll have that informed on top of like the thumbnail and it has to be when you're watching the video you have to be greeted with like a sign for that informs yes. you because you can interact with those videos without an account that is why I'm yeah. asking. Yeah, so it won't because happen. Because obviously, yeah, with, yeah. The, with the biscuited videos, you, you, you need are blocked yeah, you need by your account. age. Yeah, your yeah, age yeah. Will, 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 will tell yes. the system whether to give you a block or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. But on the free videos, that won't happen because they won't have those details. Yeah. So maybe uh, a way to solve that would be similar to the flags, that which would indicate the sentiment of the video that we yeah, discussed yeah. Oh, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could have another um, icon that yeah icon yeah that indicates as long as as long as as long as there's a, there's something that informs you a symbol yes. that informs you and you are informed then that's okay yes. as long as that is happening <coughs> then that's fine and um, you know uh, just let's quickly chat about the the one main advantage of the system and um, that being uh, not only that the YouTube viewers are informed as to the content that they're watching what they can expect yeah. but also that especially on the biscuit category of videos, this will also create accuracy 
because what would happen is say say for example myself as a as a youtube content creator i create a video and i apply an age restriction on it but coming from my cultural background from my belief system i could possibly add an inappropriate age restriction yeah. either too high or too oh, low yeah, yeah. that's true um, in this in order to fix this to get the accuracy back the viewers could place flags on the video. For example, they could use the yellow flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah, that's perfect yes. for it. Yes. With the yellow flag, you could then say, "Hey, just please have a look at your yes, age yeah, restriction. Yeah. It is, it's not accurate." And similar, similar to what we discussed about the flagging system earlier, is that this would create accuracy because the community will start yes, talking, yeah, 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 yeah. and then they will hopefully let the YouTuber know. Yeah, that you, will, you will, you will, you will know if the general consensus is high heighten the age restriction or lower it because you're yes because what, what yes. you know why is it so high you and know, obviously right. this doesn't matter on the on, on the sponsored videos and on the free videos because those videos you're not paying for so the, the importance the risk, isn't yeah. as high yeah the risk you know it's high, yeah. the the onus will be on for example on the sponsored videos uh, the onus will be on the youtuber and, and the, the sponsor yeah, and the sponsor yeah and the sponsor the brand their name. It's or their the name advertising on. agency yeah, yeah, yeah. that they're using it's up to them. Similarly, that like we spoke about with the with the um, copyrighted content, when we spoke about that, in this case, they will be responsible for making sure that whatever advert they create yeah, yeah, is age restricted. Yeah, yeah. Like their their department will check it yes. because if your name is on it, yes. you're advertising. And you need to check the age. Yeah, yes. And if in yeah. worst case scenario they they maybe put a plus seventeen on instead of a plus nineteen, in that case. Um, you know, it's not ideal, but at least the video is free. So there, there, there isn't that extra um, accountability yeah. that's needed from the YouTube side. It's really important for the biscuited videos to have accurate ratings because you are you're paying for you're it. Paying yeah. for it, and once you've paid, you want to get um, you want to get um, things um, seen that you paid for. And yeah. Yeah, and you want and to and be as accurate as possible. Yes, and that's important. Yeah. So that's the main thing of this. Yes. Yeah, and I think we've covered it then. Yes, um, that's that's all of it um, for now. Until we see each other again, and that was the age restriction system. Thank, Thank you, you for very joining much. us.